interesting enough, um, the very first car that Percy decides to sit in is with Talia. Um, and yeah, so this conversation, <sighs> it's interesting. Percy has finally deduced that the reason she doesn't like Zoe is because at one point she was going to become a hunter. Talia says the reason she didn't, and she's like gripping the steering wheel as she's saying this, is I would have had to leave Luke. Um, and when the, the conversation devolves into Luke, I, this is a side I feel like we haven't seen of her yet because she hasn't really acknowledged her connection to Luke in that way like really this is the first time she's doing it where she's saying i didn't become a hunter because of him one thing that comes up with percy is that people because athena says that his his fatal flaw is that he cares about people too much basically like that he would sacrifice everything for somebody in his life and she says that in like a negative way mm -hmm. and that's not his fatal flaw that is thalia's fatal flaw yeah. And this conversation depicts that very, very well, because can you imagine somebody saying out loud, like, Luke would never hurt me? Yeah, when, yeah. When well, she, the exact word she says is, um, you know, hard to admit Zoe was right is what Percy says to her. Yeah. And she says, she wasn't right. Luke never let me down. Never. He literally just poisoned her in the last book. He tried to kill you. Yeah. The only reason that you are alive right now is because he tried to kill you and everyone else at camp that you care about. Through like a miracle, you are alive because Percy pulled a like a miracle straight out of his ass to like make that happen. But mm -hmm. he tried to kill you when you were stuck as like a sentient being and couldn't fight back. And people say things to Percy's face that is the most like heartless shit that you can say to him like the to imagine saying something like that to him there's no way by this point that she doesn't know that luke has tried to kill him four times by yeah. this point and luke just tried to kill him again and they got away from him but he tried it again and he just didn't work and so like the idea that she is sitting there telling him to his face like no, he's never he's never done anything to me before. Uh, Zoe wasn't right about him. Like, I can get that you don't want to admit that about somebody. You don't want to admit that you're wrong. Mm -hmm. But you're telling a, like somebody like your age to their face, basically, that all the times that he tried to kill him doesn't matter. Yeah. Because you're still defending him to his biggest victim. Like, people do this to scapegoats a lot. And we just sit there and take it because it's like, what else are we supposed to do? When we try to defend ourselves, people get mad at us and say that we're the ones that are being mean. And so all he he does, honestly, the best thing you can do in this sort of interaction, which is just leave. Because yeah. it's one of those things of, I know that she's never going to admit that she sounds like a ridiculous person right now. I know that I'm right. And she even knows that I'm right about this. She just doesn't want to admit it. And it's like, this conversation is only going to get worse. The longer it goes on, the best thing I can do is just leave her alone. And that's literally all, basically what Percy does with, with Thalia this entire book. Like, I think it is so fascinating that people look at Percy and Thalia as if it's like a rivalry or that they're both, like, I saw even things today about, oh, I can't wait to see them, like, fight each other. And it's like, when has that actually happened yet? It hasn't actually happened yet. Like she yells at him and he just tries to stop it. Like mm -hmm. he, she yells at him, he gets mad for a couple seconds, one time, but so far. But other than that, he's basically just trying to leave her alone. He's trying yeah. to give her space. He's trying to make things like, okay. He's trying to get along with her and she's making it very difficult. And so the thing I wanted to say about the end of this conversation is when she says like, um, think about why Annabeth wanted to join the hunters. Mm -hmm. Like my interpretation of that, I was like, is she blaming him for that? Like, is she saying that it's his fault? She says, Annabeth wanted to join the hunters too. Maybe you should think about that. Um, 
literally the only explanation we've had in the book for her possibly wanting to join them is that her dad is moving and she like that's her stability and so my interpretation more is like annabeth wouldn't choose you as a reason to stay like i did for luke um like it was supposed to be hurtful in that way either way it's her being very mean to him yeah to be, like the best case scenario is what you said where she's saying like annabeth wanted to join the hunters because she doesn't because you're not important enough to her to mm -hmm. like stay here and so think about how she's so important to you that you're willing to do all these things to save her but you're not but you're not that important to her and that that somehow means that he's somehow done he's lacking in some way and i say all of this because he absolutely thinks that it's his fault mm -hmm. like 100 percent, he thinks it's his fault in this book that annabeth wanted to join the hunters that's why he's panicking at the end of this book when he's trying to say something to her and he can't get words out because he's panicking so much to stop her to try to stop her from joining when he thinks that she's still going to join because he thinks that it's because of him and he needs to say something to stop her yeah. and that is just that's so mean uh, mean doesn't sound like the correct word it's not for that it's like heart wrenching it's like you stop taking somebody's heart out of their chest and stomping on it when they're at like their absolute lowest point it's beyond cruel to say to somebody like you're not important to them you're not important enough to them like luke is important still to me like luke is a murderer he mm -hmm. tried to murder me and he is still more important to me than you when you have a best friend it's like why would you ever say that to somebody even if you thought that that was true why would you feel the need to put a, a kid that's going through everything that he is in this book in like put that in his mind that like even when he's trying his absolute hardest he's still not good enough to the people that he cares the most he already feels like that anyway but like yeah. why would you why would you ever say that to somebody besides knowing that that they are right about what you what he just said about luke and you want to make them feel just really bad yeah like that's the only way i can explain that because like with my situation with my golden child sister um even up until yesterday <laughs> there is a lot of times when she says things to me and now i'm aware of it because i've done enough therapy to understand our dynamic after six fucking years I know that she's saying that to hurt my feelings and and i can know that but it still doesn't mean that it doesn't still hurt me a lot because it yeah. does and so like it's a whole that's the only explanation i have for that and that is just so awful <laughs> Yeah. Especially when he hasn't actually done anything. All he did was remind you that Luke is a murderer. Like, because he tried to kill him. It's just... It's just so, so cruel. And it's like, honestly hurts my brain that people think that this is a rivalry. Like, he yeah. has never been that unnecessarily cruel to anyone ever. There are times when he should be <laughs> to people yeah. that are absolutely horrific to him. And he's not like that ever. And I just, he would never say something like that to her in that way to purposefully hurt her and, or anyone else, but especially her. He wouldn't, he doesn't do that. He instead gets out of the car and walks away. Like when she yells at him, he tries to walk away and leave her alone. Mm -hmm. It's just so it's so accurate to when you're the scapegoated person um how people try to like that's how people try to like put you down into your place but it's yeah. just so painful like when i read that i just like i had to stop reading because i was dissociating so much that i couldn't even read the book <laughs> like the words were just like moving all the way across the screen where they were like on the wall next to me because yeah. I was dissociating so much from that. And I was like, I need to like calm down because it 
that that is something that actually happens and it's like it happens in a way where it actually occurs and so it doesn't feel like this like big moment in the book because rick isn't like an over dramatic like after school special writing person about trauma he writes it about in a way of like how it actually happens in real life mm -hmm. and so it's one of those things that i feel like goes over people's heads if you don't realize what it is but this is why we're here <laughs> to try to explain just yeah. how just how horrible that is and that he just walks away from that and just moves on like nothing happened.